Natagio gets assurance, BitOcean goes two ways, and Greenpeace shares a love with Bitcoin. Today is Monday, September 22, 2014, and the price of Bitcoin is currently sitting around $400. I'm Stephen Chung, and here's what's happening today in money and tech. British Bitcoin exchange Natagio has become the first of its kind to attain assurance for their Bitcoin storage with an international standard known as the ISAE 3000. ISAE stands for International Standard on Assurance Engagements and is a recognized standard issued by the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board, BDO LLP, a professional services firm based in the UK, who audited the company, determined that Natagio held strong control mechanisms that ensured the security of all Bitcoin in the company's profession and that Natagio's Bitcoin Gold and Sterling Exchange met the highest compliance requirements and standards of other registered financial exchanges. Natagio's CEO Simon Hamblin says, We are delighted to have our Bitcoin storage environment be positively assessed in line with the ISAE 3000 standard. The latest recognition reinforces our commitment to growing our secure peer-to-peer -peer exchange platform on which to trade Bitcoin, gold, and sterling, and as a stepping stone towards the maturity in the community of companies operating in the Bitcoin space. The Washington, D.C.-based organization Coin Center officially launched on Thursday the 18th. The business is dedicated to the research and advocacy of digital currency and is receiving the support and backing from a number of well-known Bitcoin investors and companies such as BitGo and Coinbase. Coin Center Executive Director Jerry Brito stated his excitement in an open letter to the community saying, Digital currencies like Bitcoin will be an important part of our economy, and policymakers are now beginning to consider how to regulate their use. As a result, there is a need for an organization that can be a trusted and credible source of information about the regulatory implications of digital currencies. We seek to be that trusted and credible source. MIT student Jeremy Rubin is scheduled to appear in court today after being subpoenaed by the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs. Last year, Rubin and three of his classmates created a program named Tidbit as part of the Node Knockout Hackathon, allowing users to mine Bitcoin for sites to remove ads. Rubin and his classmates won an award for innovation, but the project was never made fully functional, only existing as a proof of concept. Shortly after the event, the NJDCA demanded the confiscation of Tidbit's source code, significant amounts of documentation, as well as the names and identities of anyone who ever mined or used Tidbit in any capacity. A strange request given that Tidbit was never fully realized. Recently announced, the Electronic Frontier Foundation has taken the case. As staff attorney Hani Fukari states, while the state certainly has a right to investigate consumer fraud, threatening out-of-state college students with subpoenas isn't the way to do it. The fear that any state can issue broad subpoenas to any student anywhere in the country will have a chilling effect on campus technological innovation beyond Tidbit. Technology development company BitOcean has released a new China-based Bitcoin ATM with features designed to compete with current popular machine brands. The new machines are two-way kiosks meant for both the purchase and sale of Bitcoin and with multi-currency support and compliance capabilities to comply with current regulations in various jurisdictions. BitOcean founder and CEO Xiaoning Nan explains, Our major market is Asia now, because in this region we can provide the best tech support for all of our customers and partners. But we would like to sell the BitOcean ATM all over the world. Nan also explains that the machines offer more safety and functionality than other machines and allow for transaction confirmations via email, mobile phone, and paper wallet printing. Square CEO Jack Dorsey revealed future plans to integrate Bitcoin payments into their Square register. During a CBC interview about how the release of Apple Pay affects Square, Dorsey stated, We're building a register so that sellers can accept a credit card, so they can accept cash, so they can accept a check, so they can accept Bitcoin, and so they can accept any form of payment that comes across the counter, including future ones and burgeoning ones like Apple Pay. Square registers accept all major credit cards and are currently installed in thousands of stores, including Whole Foods and many other large retailers. Square had previously integrated Bitcoin as a payment option on Square Market earlier this year. Environmental campaign organization Greenpeace has announced that it will accept Bitcoin donations in its U.S. division through a partnership with BitPay in an attempt to save funds and expand its financial capabilities. 
Ben Croats, the online strategy director of Greenpeace USA, is very excited about working with BitPay, stating, BitPay's reputation as a trusted and secure third-party Bitcoin payment processor made it easy for us to begin accepting Bitcoin, thus opening us up to new markets and donors. Find more information on today's news stories at moneyintech.com. I'm Stephen Chun, and thanks for watching Money in Tech's daily news update.